Hello, I'm Hannah with the Lethbridge Transparency Council, and I'm here interviewing uh, incumbent councillor Jeff Carlson, who's running for re-election. Uh, thank you so much, Jeff. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks, Hannah. I, as I said to you earlier, I appreciate you taking the time. It's quite an undertaking. So uh, kudos to you. Well done. Thank you. It's been quite the journey, but uh, I, I appreciate that that you're taking uh, candidates, plural, are taking the time also to do the interview. So with that in mind, we'll just get started right away. So what do you think needs improvement in the processes of city council and administration? Oh, now that's an, an, an excellent question. One that uh, probably has never been thrown at me before. So interesting. Um, the processes. Uh, you know, Hannah, I'm, I'm, I might sort of hedge a bit there because we changed a lot of the, the processes um, um, this go around. A lot of things, if, if you'd have asked me this question four years ago, I would have had a list uh, of things that I, I thought would should be changed to help improve communication, to help improve uh, information sharing, knowledge, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And now I, I got to tick most of those off over the course of this last term. Uh, things like we used to get two days uh, with the agenda in front of us as counselors. And sometimes the agenda was 360 pages. So you'd get it on a Thursday night. You, uh, after work on Friday, you might have time to crack it, to skim. And then you'd pour into it Saturday and Sunday. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, and then your meeting started Monday morning. No time for research. No time to, to go to um, the folks who compile it and say, what does this mean? What is this? Help me with this. So we expanded that to, uh, I think we now get 10 days, uh, at least seven with the agenda. So it gives us time to read it, to digest it, uh, and then probe for some extra questions or extra information we need. So that's a huge uh, process we changed. Plus, um, moving to SBCs, our special purpose committees, um, because council has a, a fairly short window of time in council meetings to, to do the business of council. And, and so the SPCs now can take the time to, to study the issues, to request more information, to probe, to call in other folks to give differing sides and have public participation. And so a lot of the big decisions that come to council now have been vetted through these other layers uh, before they come to council for a decision. So we changed a lot of things this go around. We even redid our uh, procedure bylaw completely. And so a lot of the things I wanted changed got changed. Um, so I don't have a big list of of further improvements, I want to sit with the changes we've made and see how they feel. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, I, I really appreciate you kind of going into more depth of what's changed over the last couple of years. I know that'll be a good overview for, for people too as well who maybe not do not understand everything that's changed uh, in the last election cycle. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate that. I, um, I, I'm very happy that you think people are still watching my video. They're like, he's boring. <laughs> Oh, come on you've got a nice pretty background to look at there's trees and green space it's a lot better than my boring <laughs> wall over here so that's the world that's beautiful it's true i have two globe nice. like puzzles behind me um, <laughs> <clears throat> but anyways uh talking about the mdp now what mm -hmm. recommendations would you make to engage more citizens in the mdp process um interesting question um do you feel that that folks weren't engaged that wanted to be? Oh, that's that's a reverse on. Um, okay. I know a lot of candidates have expressed that they've heard that citizens weren't engaged. Uh, hmm. It's definitely something that other candidates have expressed or or concerns about how long the document is and how that's not accessible. Those are some other things that I've heard over the last very, time. Thanks. It is a very massive document. Um, uh, and uh, I, this is my second iteration of a municipal development plan, for those not familiar with the lingo. Um, in my time on council, the first time, um, we spent two years um, out in community. I think there was four, four councillors, uh, Councillor Parker, myself, Councillor Tratch, and Councillor Lacey. And we, we spearheaded the whole project. And we wanted it, we wanted to leave, leave no stone unturned of, of folks and it was impossible 
even at that time to get people engaged and we tried everything we we went out to the community we tried to bring the community in we threw it out to service groups to do uh what do we call it? city circles <clears throat> and so we really did our darndest to involve a lot of people most citizens aren't that thrilled about a municipal development plan so this time we decided we're not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. we're going to take the the one that we worked on with the citizens and we're just going to use that as the template and the guiding uh, document and talk to the folks that are interested uh, the the people that it that use the mdp every day and it touches um, and so we used a lot of those types of groups to get their input but then we also took a couple months there's my dog barking a couple months to um to throw it out to the public once the draft was up we posted it everywhere and said give me feedback but i would hazard a guess that if you went through it from start to finish it's probably a 16 hour adventure um and so a, a lot of like if i talk to my neighbor they don't want to know they don't want to talk about should it be a three foot setback or a three and a half foot setback um not exciting to them the good news is the folks that we reach out to on all these uh, different groups, things like the chamber, uh, things like build, et cetera, they're made up of your average citizen. So when somebody is forced to go through the MDP as part of their chamber or other committee duties, they're not just looking at the chamber. If they see something that twigs them as a, uh, a I don't want to say average citizen or regular citizen, nor a non biased citizen i don't know how you put that um it would it would twig in their mind as well so i think there was a lot of opportunities uh, i haven't personally heard from anyone who wanted to be involved that couldn't be we had the opportunities were there um if people really want to get involved in the mdp tell them to give me a call and uh, sure <laughs> i can i can sit down over the next 16 hours and work it through them her work with it. <laughs> yeah, I, I certainly appreciate again that perspective of, of what council has done in the past uh, to engage citizens and what that might look like in the future as well. I, I do genuinely appreciate you sharing, sharing that. Um, so what do you think the top three issues are in the community? Top three issues are top three uh, things I want to, to sort of address. Um, yeah, issues in the community okay. and how you want to address them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I think top of mind for a lot of folks right now um, uh, is is safety, security, and well-being. We're in the middle of a pandemic, um, which is causing major health concerns to folks. Uh, it's uh, a lot of stress. I, I I don't know if you see it in the community, but a lot of stress. And uh, as Lethbridge is growing as a community, I think. Um, Growing up here, I mean, Lethbridge was always a small town feel where everyone knew everyone. Well, as we're expanding, I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done to um, to keep us connected. And a lot of that work can be done in neighborhoods um, uh, through that, uh, where you know your neighbors, etc. And I think we lost a lot of that through the pandemic, um, a lot of that connection. Um, and at the same time, social issues and crime was starting to spike. So I think those are a couple of the things that we really need to sort of focus on is bringing back that sense of pride, a uh, sense of community, um, the, the love of Lethbridge. I, I love this city. Uh, I, uh, the reason I ran for council is because I feel so blessed by, by how this city has treated me and all of the things it's given me. So I adore the city. That's why I ran for council. And I want to make sure that that sticks around I think a um, couple of other things I, I'm focused on is economic diversification. Um, jobs are top of mind. Um, we, we, I think, keep, keep harping on the pandemic. But I think one of the things we learned is we need to be better resilient, uh, build that resiliency in, in the face of pandemics, future pandemics, or climate change, or whatever the world throws at us. Lethbridge does a pretty good job of riding on an even keel. I think we can do better and be better. So that's that's a big part of, of what I'd like uh, to work on. And then uh, something that really has come to the fore in my mind over the last couple of years 
is um, relationships with uh, our regional partners, um, but more importantly, because uh, they're our biggest funders, uh, the provincial government and the federal government. Uh, I don't want to. Um, I don't want to ever. Um, be mean to <laughs> i'm trying to think of a proper way to say it disparage um yep. <laughs> past, there you go past councils but it's never been top of mind priority is is building an advocacy plan we've always relied on everyone else to do it for us uh economic mm -hmm. development lethbridge does a great job uh, but they've got their focus you know uh the college does a great job the university does a great job the chamber does a great job build does a great job so we've allowed everyone else to tell our message and tell our story. And I think that's, that's been damaging to us. So we get sort of overlooked by our provincial overlords, so to speak. Um, so advocacy is, is a, a big one for me. Um, I don't know how many more you want me to go on. That's can... good, that was three, so that's perfect. I've got 50. <laughs> that's okay, there's more options to share more things. No, no worries. Yeah, I think relationships with the provincial and federal government is really important because that's where the majority of the spending comes from, for sure. So uh, mm -hmm. building that relationship is, is really vital. Um, so what do you think uh, Lethbridge should be doing to promote uh, a good environment for business oh. in the city? You know, uh, you hate, I keep talking about the pandemic. Uh, we had a lot of time uh, over the last two years because it, the pandemic derailed a lot of our strategic plan. Um, which has been put on hold for better, for worse. So we had a lot of time to do a lot of um, navel gazing and then a lot of discussion, um, focused uh, discussion with different entities. And I think um, one of the groups ran on, on the economic and the business side of thing. I was on the cultural social pillar, um, but we all, I was the chair of that. So we all got to get together and chat about what we're hearing and how we could help. And so I think we've done a lot of really good um, I wish I wish I had the, the policies. We crafted a lot of really good policies, um, like tax incentive policies. Um, I'm trying to think of, of the other ones to try and help business. And of course, we've always been focused, at least <clears throat> for the last eight years, on streamlining uh, services and streamlining the processes in City Hall that people have the hoops people have to, to jump through. And so I think our relationship with business is getting much better. Uh, when I talk to the folks in, in the chamber and uh, small business, uh, they're, they're saying they've seen changes, they've seen positive changes, and they, they like to know that we're actually thinking uh, about them more and they're top of mind. Um, and now I've forgotten what the question was. That's okay. You got it. You answered okay. it. It was, oh, it was how to build a better environment for Lethbridge oh, or for business. And you, you mm -hmm. did it. You, so that's great. Um, so <laughs> Double thumbs up. So uh, you talked about this earlier, yep. uh, about the process of crafting the MDP. So looking at the MDP back, what decisions did you agree with and what decisions were you not so much in favor of or mm -hmm. disagreed with? You know, Hannah, <clears throat> I probably bought, brought the most amendments uh, forward uh, in the MDP after the months and months and months of consultation and and preparation. Some of them uh, were uh, greatly supported by my colleagues. Some were amended themselves and changed slightly and then supported. And some of them were thrown out completely. I, I think I always said the cheese stands alone uh, when I'd lose eight to one on, on an issue. But I don't want to go back and, and nitpick because it's the joy of democracy. There are nine of us around that table and we all bring a different set of values. Uh, to the table and we all push for it. But at the end of the day, I think the nine of us um, with input from the citizens and for help with admin, obviously, I think we come to some pretty good solutions uh, for the community. And so I don't want to say, oh, well, because I lost this issue eight to one or five to four, I'm mad about it. I'm not. Uh, I, I know I'm not perfect. And I, I, trust the, I trust the wisdom of the whole. So I, I don't want to nitpick and go back and say, I'm mad about this, happy with that. But that's just me. Yeah, and it's good to know that uh, 
particularly that council definitely did have that debate for sure. And, and it's important to realize that amendments were made and, and brought forward. And that's an important part of the process too, for yeah. sure. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta try, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, you try and fail is better than not trying at all. Very true. So looking at mm. transportation, how would you prioritize transportation in the future for Lethbridge? Hmm. I think I'm trying to cast back to our most recent transportation master plan. I think we tried a bit of uh, newness. Um, uh, Lethbridge has always been very focused on the single occupancy automobile. Uh, <clears throat> and I think council said, you know, there's a, a, a lot of healthier options, a lot of more environmental options, a lot of um, more pleasant options. And so I think we, 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 I think we sort of almost flipped it on its head. We put people, I'm just going to try and figure out people first. Um, bicycles. Veterans, bicyclists, uh, transit, uh, multi-occupancy vehicles, and, and then single occupancy. Wow, you're making me go back in time here. So sorry. You did it though. That was yeah, the right well, order. Right. And so we said, let's try this. Uh, because we've been in communities or we looked at communities where they have put people first and and there's always the pushback i mean dear dear heavens when uh, calgary or vancouver tried to close their first street in their downtown to make it pedestrian friendly um, or pedestrian only the business community lost their minds but now if you go to those streets they are the busiest most vibrant streets in the cities so, I mean, you, Lethbridge, is, Lethbridge is already focused on the single occupancy vehicle, telling our transportation department to flip it around and focus the other direction for a while, I think is going to have some great benefits. doesn't mean we're going to be ripping up every street and turning it into parks and gardens yet, um, but, uh, but I think it'll, it'll, it'll add some different, different thought patterns to folks. And it'll make it a, a much more interesting, walkable, livable city. I, I appreciate that perspective too, that that it is flipped around. And, and I certainly have heard lots of different perspectives in the answer to this question. So yeah. it's it's good to get uh city council's perspective as well. Yeah, I so mean, it just a, it, it's a long-term plan. Uh, you know, it, it's not over the next four years. <laughs> Everyone will be walking and bike, bicycling. That's a word. Uh, cycling. Um, it, this is just a long-term vision, and so yeah, I people do get concerned about things, uh, but it, it's we're not ripping up everything and starting fresh. We're just saying, but this is a focus for now. Hope that helps. Absolutely. So, <laughs> big question: Where do you think the city should be spending more money? Mm. What an excellent question. I never get asked that question. I always get asked the opposite, the adverse. Well, that's coming next, but. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Um, you know, I, it's been a focus of mine um, is, is the social side of things. Uh, we did the KPMG um, reports and uh, reviews, and uh, they did show a lot of areas in the city where, oh yeah, you spend 1.3% more than average here. You know, it, tiny little increments. But one thing that jumped out, um, and uh, um, I don't know if you've had a chance to chat with uh, Councillor Croson, because she and I have been chatting about this. Lethbridge was highlighted, one of the areas, we spend f far less, like half, uh, than most communities on social issues and social programs. Our social spending is ridiculously low. And then we go, and I wonder why we've got some social issues. Um, so I think that is, that is one area of the community that we could definitely use some reinvestment or investment into. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, never, I never get to talk about spending more money. That was nice. Well, now you have to talk about where you think we should be spending less money. So I'd mm. love to hear that. All righty. Um, you know, I, I've got my personal bents, um, obviously, um, but but I think it's more important that the community tell us, because I get this question all the time. Um, I want to pay less taxes. I want less this. I want less. And, and I, I always turn it around on them. 
I'm like, what would you like us to do less of? Um, and thinking of the, the core services, the expensive services, right? Here's what's expensive in our community. Police, number one. Fire, EMS. Parks. Those are the massive expenses in our community. And what do people want more? They want more police. They want more fire and EMS. They want more and better parks. And so I always say to them, you know, I, I could cut every every arts program in the city and it wouldn't amount to half a percent of the police and fire and parks budget. Um, so I always, I always ask them what they'd like to see less of because we could do less snow removal, but no one would like it. It's one of our biggest expenditures and we're always over budget on it. Um, you know, we could, well, we tried, we spent $100,000 less out of a $13 million parks budget, $100,000 less on maintenance. And the amount of emails and phone calls I got, you'd think we'd uh, shot a dog in the middle of Main Street. Um, so it, it's hard. We've tried so many times to, to reduce things. And people don't, people love Lethbridge. You know, if people think our taxes are high, they're actually if you, if you go to the AUMA, Alberta Urban <laughs> Municipal Association website, they've got all the data up there that are, we're actually less than average taxes. We're right in the middle of the pack, but people think our taxes are high, which is fair. Most people hate paying taxes. I get it. But I always say, look at our community. We just had a new employee come to town. And uh, so we, uh, he moved here, I think either from Regina or Toronto. And I said, what do you think of Lethbridge? He goes, oh my gosh, your roads, your street, your sidewalks, your park, everything is amazing. Um, and I said, wait till you start to hear the complaints. <laughs> and he goes, I'll just tell them to drive to Calgary or Medicine Hat or Regina. So you get what you pay for. We can do less, um, but um, to, to, to people want that. Because we can always find efficiencies. There's always those little efficiencies you can find. And, but, you know, I've been beating the bush on efficiencies for 12 years now. Um, uh, if people want big, big reductions in spending, it, it, it means less service. And I, I, I don't know that people want that. No, I know uh, I took a mm. class when, with uh, Jeff Kaufman and he said oh. that he always, uh, he always, the biggest complaints are always snow removal. People mm -hmm. were complaining about that. Their their thing more than anything else, yep. snow removal mm -hmm. every time. Yep. So uh, I know people love to cut services and and love to talk about it, but uh, also love to complain about it when they, when they are cut. So, um, so look as an aside, Hannah. Sorry, I know we're running out of time. You're gonna hold up your time. Like stop talking. Um, I get three a.m. phone calls when it's snowing outside. It'll start snowing at midnight. Phone will ring at 3 a.m. Why is my street not clear? And my response usually is because I'm not magic. Click. <laughs> that's, yeah. gotta, that's gotta be really, really tough. Yeah. I, I know my dad, dad is a CAO and runs into the same issues where he gets wow. he gets calls about that all the time. In the middle of a blizzard. Why isn't my snow or my street cleared? <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah, people really care about being able to get around, that's for sure. Uh, which run. leads us very well into our last two questions. So okay. uh, just mm. looking at capital spending. So what criteria do you recommend that the city look out prior to approving capital projects? One second here, I need to cough. Sorry, I've been talking all day and I've lost my voice. Um, you're gonna have to read that one again. I'm sorry, I was not. Um, uh, all good. What oh, criteria? What criteria for capital? Projects? Yes. What criteria oh. to look at for capital projects? Hmm. Are you talking new capital projects or all capital? Because we've got quite a list of criteria that we, we follow going into a capital budget, but it mm -hmm. doesn't apply to new projects. It applies to everything we own as well. Okay. Yeah. Let's look at new, new capital projects. Okay. That's new where capital. most candidates have taken it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, because I, I, just as an aside, I, I really like 
focusing on maintaining what we have. Uh, it's one of the reasons Lethbridge is in such good shape is because we do maintain things well. Um, so that and that's a big part of our capital spending. Um, so looking at new projects, um, I think there's lots of, of criteria. What would be near and dear to my heart? Um, I think first and foremost, uh, community desire. Um, you know, people talk a lot about wants versus needs um, and, and all they uh, ever think about at that point is, is their wants uh, and they think their needs. Um, uh, so they think that their wants should be needs. Everyone else's uh, wants should just be wants. So it's an interesting discussion. So we do quite a lot of pro uh, um, uh, process leading up to a capital plan where we go out and we do um, say the um, facilities master planning or the arts uh, and culture master planning, recreational master planning, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we spend years um, ascertaining what are the gaps in our community? Where, where do things need to fit and what, what, what can we do? And so I always rely heavily on that. I think good planning um, and good data makes great decisions. Um, a couple projects that were on the capital plan for 20 years. Uh, one still is the Performing Arts Center. It's been identified as a need in our community for 20 years now. And then also the uh, a Leisure Center was identified as a, as a gap uh, for many, many years. So, so those are projects that float up to the top for me, is when uh, the community has identified them and is willing to work uh, and and talk to us uh, on their behalf and support them, and and sometimes they always we always have to figure out you know just getting the capital costs is one thing, those ongoing operating costs is what drives things up. So council's got to keep an eye on that. So we need that as great as good information, solid information. What's the ongoing cost? Um, now I got off topic and I forgot um, what my other criteria was going to be. Um, a good business plan so we can identify all those numbers is is important criteria um uh, i guess you know that's on the the sort of the sexy side of things which everyone focuses on in the capital plan on the the less sexy side of things uh, things like uh, in our utility sector um there's lots of stuff that is just forced on us um uh, alberta utilities or alberta environment or Feds say, thou shalt do this, thou shalt do that. So sometimes you have to spend 10 million bucks on a new clarifier for your water treatment plant. That <laughs> nobody in the city is going to go, woohoo, we got a new clarifier. Um, but those, so those are the kind of criteria I think you need to look at, if that makes sense. Yeah. And, and, and can you live within your means? We have a great, it's called the pay as you go program which uh, every year we put a little bit aside um, so that we can make interest payments on things we have to take out loans or like the ATB center that was paid for through the pay as you go um, where you can take out the loan, but you've got the, the, the uh, interest. You can take care of the interest in your pay as you go. So that's a great program, but, but you know, we're only about a third, maybe less than that of the way through our debt limit. Most communities are at their debt limit or way above. Some have had to get permission to go over. So we've got a, a fairly high debt limit. I don't ever adver or advocate for taking on too much debt because it's uh, putting off for tomorrow. But, uh, but if, if projects come up that the community is desperate for, we can do them. Yeah, so that circles really well to the last question. I know you talked about kind of two uh, things in the capital plan that you thought were really important. Can you think of anything in the capital plan in the capital improvement program that maybe you see is not as important or um, you maybe wouldn't support it moving forward? Oh, dear heavens. <clears throat> um, no. Um, like there's a lot of stuff that I, I, I do support uh, 100% and was it was actually one of the more um, heartfelt CIPs that we've done in the past because we did things like we we doubled the amount of investment into um, making our our facilities and uh, uh, 
uh, infrastructure accessible to all. So for folks with mobility challenges, et, uh, et cetera, et cetera, uh, connectivity issues, um, we doubled that funding. I think we doubled it. Um, I don't have the plan. But I think we, we usually invest a million bucks a year. We're investing two and a half or something a year into that so that all of our citizens can access all of our community. So the, uh, we put $5 million towards affordable housing, um, which is going to be so important uh, over the next few years. Um, we did a lot of planning, et cetera. Uh, sports courts. Oh, my gosh. The pandemic showed how it, it, it re-encouraged people to use our parks. I, I'm right near a park, and I see that that court is used 24-7 with people playing basketball, skateboarding, whatever it is. It, it's awesome. <clears throat> I can't think of anything that I hate <laughs> in our plan, because if it, if it was brought forward and it was supported by at least five of my colleagues, then I think the community probably supported that. Um, and I thought we did a, a darn good job of not spending it all. Um, we had, we had, I don't know the numbers offhand, but I think we had about $35 million that we could invest in the community. Um, and we retained about 10 or 15 at least of that uh, for future councils. So we weren't spending like drunken sailors. Uh, we were doing very important focused projects for the community. And I think most of it was very well supported by us all, I think. Yeah, it's a, that's a really good perspective. I appreciate, appreciate that. So thank it's you for hard, doing the interview. <laughs> it's hard for me to be negative about my colleagues who, who work very, very hard on council and bring their perspective forward. So I, I don't ever like to be negative to them. Yeah, and, and absolutely everybody on council, I think, regardless of, of where they sit politically or, or their beliefs, definitely uh, care. They're there because they care, obviously. So they model. whether whether they're over here or over here, uh, they still <laughs> you still at least have councillors that want to improve the city. So I, I, I can recognize that for sure. So is there anything you'd like to add or let people know how they can get in touch with you before we wrap this up? Um, sure. Uh, uh, it, it's Councillor Carlson at gmail.com. Councillor Carlson, all one word. Um, I'm, I'm available on Facebook. You can phone me. Um, my information is all on the City of Lethbridge web page where all the councillors have all our information. Um, it's funny you said uh, I care. It's my motto. Uh, I care. It stands for innovation, compassion, arts, recreation, and the environment. That's my platform. And so when you said it, I thought maybe you were reading my, my page there. So I appreciate, appreciate the plug. <laughs> I did not read the page for the sake of transparency. Oh, no. I was just making a statement, but <laughs> All right. I jumped it, right on that statement. <laughs> it did over overlap really well. So thank you so much, uh, Councillor Carlson. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Anna. I hope you get some time to yourself and not have to chat with all of us for the next little while. I enjoy it. But anyways, thank you. <laughs> you take care.